Hello and welcome to another edition of Coach's Corner, where each and every Thursday we are joined by college coaches from around the country, all levels, all divisions. We also speak with some of the professional coaches and players uh, that have gone through the process as high school athletes, college athletes, and now ultimately professional baseball. want to remind everyone that each and every Thursday, uh, this particular segment that Dave Serrano and I do are brought to you by Six Tool, uh, which is a brand new app, which is more about baseball IQ. It's about teaching the inner uh, parts of the game, rules, uh, things for student athletes. Or if you're a high school coach, a travel coach, or even a, a college coach, you know, and you have a team that you want to do a, a curriculum based activity with, the Six Tool app. Uh, which has been developed by former major leaguers and college players is the perfect app for your curriculum component to your pra practices. Also the baseball blue book, which is pretty much the LinkedIn of for baseball and social media, anything and everything to do with baseball, baseball instruction, teams, recruiting, et cetera. Make sure you download the baseball blue book app. Join today by somebody literally in my backyard, Holy Cross, which is lo uh, which is located in Worcester. Yes, Worcester, that's how it's pronounced. Uh, Worcester, Massachusetts. Uh, being from Auburn, it's literally, I can throw a rock out my door and, and hit the field. We, we're joined by Ed Kahavik, the head coach at Holy Cross, who's been kind enough to join us during the summer and getting busy. Prepared for August 1st, I assume, coach, is that true? Oh, definitely, right around the corner here. Yeah, and, and college recruiting knows no uh, no downtime. So I truly appreciate you taking a few minutes to join us and time away from your family. And, and Ed, <clears throat> this is something that I want parents to understand when we're talking academics and athletics. Uh, the Patriot League is one of those leagues that gets kind of not so much light shined upon it. Uh, and I want you to kind of share a little bit about not only Holy Cross baseball, but the Patriot League and the and the challenges of all the great teams within it. Sure. Well, first of all, Walter, thanks for having me. I'm fired up to be here. Uh, you know, the Patriot League is a wonderful conference, uh, one of the most academic conferences in the entire country. Uh, one great thing about the Patriot League compared to maybe some other peer conferences uh, that have peer institutions on the academic side is while we are while we are one of those elite academic leagues. Uh, we do not have the restrictions on us that, say, an Ivy League does from an athletic standpoint. So uh, for us, there are, you know, the Patriot League sponsors six schools that have baseball, Navy, Army, Lehigh, Lafayette, Bucknell, and Holy Cross. And, uh, you know, obviously tremendous schools, uh, primarily in the Northeast. You've got Annap Navy down in Annapolis in the Mid-Atlantic region. Um, but as I was saying, you know, we aren't beholden to num limited practices, limited days, things like that. So you know, for all intents and purposes, you know, we don't, you know, we, we can practice in our 20 hour week, our eight hour week, number of games we can schedule is really no different than, than a power five opponent would be. So it really is that perfect blending of the elite academic environment combined with the comprehensive nature of a division one schedule. You know, and I want to talk a little bit about Holy Cross specifically with regard to facilities. First of all, the campus, one could argue, and I'm partial because I, again, live in the area, but the campus is majestic. It sits high up on a hill, but over and above the overall campus vibe at Holy Cross, I want to talk about your stadium. I, I mean, a lot of people are, have to be very envious because you literally play your games at Fit and Field, which is now the home of the Worcester Bravehearts. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of history and nostalgia over fit and feel. But talk about your facility and your amenities that you offer at student athletes. Yeah, we're very, very fortunate here at Holy Cross to have uh, a baseball stadium with a capacity of 3000 on campus. That's important to know. You don't have to drive to it. You don't have to cross a major highway to get to it uh, from the very top of the hill to the bottom of the hill, which are, you know, our, our athletic facilities kind of bookend the campus at the very top you have. Our indoor practice facility, uh, which is, you know, wall to wall turf, full size, you know, 100 yards indoor field house, uh, which is great for, for our student athletes. And then you walk down the hill 10 to 12 minutes and you're at our stadium. So uh, 3000 person capacity uh, and it has lights and it can't really be overstated the importance of those lights. We're one of only six division one schools in all of New England that has lights at our field. And as I was talking about that perfect marriage between the academic and athletic 
uh, those lights allow us to really offer the best of both worlds without sacrifice one or the other. So, you know, I often have student potential student athletes and parents ask, you know, coach, what time do you practice in the fall? And I said, well, that depends what time our last guy gets out of classes. Some days it might be 250. And on those days we'll practice at 330. If someone has a science lab that goes till four, no problem. We can start practice at 430. Uh, so that autonomy with our uh, practice schedule, you know, really is extremely beneficial for our student athletes to truly get the best of both worlds academically without sacrificing their athletic development. So I know you, you've attended various camps throughout the summer and a lot of tournaments I've seen you at. One of the things that I would love for you to share with parents is not only, you know, Holy Cross specifically with regard to the academics, but talk about your recruiting calendar, meaning when do you as a staff begin to really get into a potential student athlete? Is it their junior year of high school? Is it their rising senior summer? How does Holy Cross work with regard to recruiting? Sure. So I think we're a little bit more patient than the average Division One program. Uh, that may be shifting a little bit with the, the new legislation that's come through with the, the August 1st um, communication date. Uh, but the reason for that from our end is we need, from an admissibility standpoint, to have a more complete picture uh, of the student athlete's academic profile. Because as one of the most selective schools in the country, you know, it's, it's pretty rare that they're going to give us the go ahead to support an applicant through the admissions process with only two years under their belt. So typically we want to see at least two and a half at times, three years uh, of academic information. So with that in mind, you know, right now, here we are in the, towards the end of July, um, you know, we have our list of 2025s uh, that we will reach out to starting in August. Most of our commitments, Walter, come uh, after the new year of a student athlete's junior year. So, you know, I know parents oftentimes will, start to panic a little bit. Uh, I can tell you our first commitment this year for the 2024 class was, was in April, was in April of a student athlete's junior year. So our window for committing guys, and at times we might get a guy or two in the fall, um, a guy or two in the fall, but just like our admissions want to do their, their due diligence on the um, academic side, we want to do ours on the athletic side. And not only that, but the character side and, you know, check all those boxes, checking in with coaches and people, that these young men surround themselves with so that we can get a full holistic picture of, of what type of an individual we're, we're dealing with. So long story short, our, most of our commitments will come from, you know, middle of spring of a student athlete's junior year to the end of this summer. So we've had our classes wrapped up by August at times we've gone into September and October. So it's kind of a year by year, but for us, it's long, it's that, you know, that junior year, end of your junior year, heading into your senior year is when we do the majority of our, you know, recruiting in terms of locking guys up. Well, I think it's great that, and I think it's really advantageous for student athletes and families, as a matter of fact, when we're talking about being patient, allowing the process to kind of take its natural course with regard to not only academic maturation, but athletic maturation. And that junior year is when most student athletes begin to fill out both academically and athletically. How do you, Ed, as a, as a staff, prefer to be contacted are, are you more uh you know reactive to student athletes that contact you are you proactive with regard to people you trust in your circle as far as this is a guy you might want to go see how do you as a staff prefer to be contacted by student athletes great question it's it's all of it to be honest with you it's all of it we are extremely proactive uh reaching out to coaches uh first and foremost locally but then in our different pockets and, and pipelines that we've created all over the nation. Um, you know, so we're very, very proactive in introducing ourselves to student athletes and, you know, teaching them what Holy Cross is all about. On the flip side, Holy Cross has an extremely strong alumni network, not only uh, in the professional world, but athletically as well. So we are often getting recommendations by those who feel certain student athletes would be a great fit for Holy Cross. And we take those really seriously. And then obviously there's a student athlete that knows of Holy Cross and just wants to reach out uh, and see what we're all about. So it's all of the above. It, I would encourage student athletes who are interested in Holy Cross or at least learning more to reach out via email, uh, you know, with social media, you know, I'm on Twitter, you know, as is, as are all of our assistant coaches, our recruiting coordinator, Sam Tinkham. Um, that's usually the quickest and easiest way is to just rifle off, you know, cause then we can pop up on, on your page on Twitter and, 
you know, poke around a little bit. You know, I'll be honest, we don't respond to, to everybody. It's really difficult. We do get inundated with that. But I can tell you we're, we're doing our best to gather as much information in a really short period of time when guys do reach out via email, Twitter. And, of course, if you identify a camp that we're attending or a clinic, you know, that's a great way to get in front of to ensure you're going to be in front of our coaching staff. And uh, that's in addition to the clinics that we host here on campus uh, at Holy Cross as well. So it's all of it, Walter. It's all of it. Um, you know, coaches reaching out, players reaching out, and of course, attending events that, that are, you can attend that we will be in attendance at. Well, you know, you start speaking of Holy Cross alumni. You know, my sons and I used to go out on the West Coast in the summer for baseball events. We'd see Holy Cross flags being hung, you know, on beaches on the West Coast. And I was living in Louisiana when the boys went to college and uh, Gil the Thrill Fennerty, uh, you know, he was a guy that was from New Orleans. And so there were Holy Cross flags everywhere in Louisiana. And also, I want to let parents know and student athletes know, you know, we're all gun ho about Omaha. Holy Cross baseball has a substantial history with regard to Omaha. You know, they've had teams that have not only gone and been tremendously successful at, in Omaha, albeit back in the 50s and 60s. But, you know, Holy Cross Athletics has, has put out, you know, some of the best football, basketball, baseball, uh, women's, I believe, lacrosse is coached by Bill Belichick's daughter. So, That's right. you know, Holy Cross is, is one of the biggest schools that you as a student athlete, you know, if you're from California, the West Coast may not be informed enough about, but I can assure you uh, from both an academic and athletic perspective, it is an extremely prestigious uh, university. So on that note, Ed, when you're out recruiting, do you find yourself having to bring student athletes up to speed as to the history and story of Holy Cross? Or do you think everybody has a good idea of who you are? Uh, no, it's, 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 again, it's both. It's both. There are some student athletes that we reach out to who maybe didn't even reach out to us. Just a, a kid the other day from Florida said, coach, I'm extremely well aware of Holy Cross. You know, I have family, friends that have gone there. My parents are from Massachusetts and this, we had no idea. We just saw him. We saw he had good grades and he had the ability. So, uh, sometimes you run into that. Sometimes you run into alums, kids, uh, who know everything about it. And other times we're introducing ourselves to guys who have no idea, have never even heard of Holy Cross. So conversation to conversation, uh, each are, are very different. And the amount of depth we have to go into with each individual with those initial conversations is going to be a little bit different. Um, you know, before I forget, though, you, you mentioned how, you know, we have that really prestigious history. Uh, we are a fun fact. It's one of the only school from the Northeast that has a national championship in baseball. It's 1952. Uh, but we're the only school in the Northeast that has a national championship and talking about that uh, academic and athletic blend, you know, we're a school with over just over 3000 students, but 25% of our students, one quarter are a division one athlete. And that's the highest percentage in the nation. So uh, there's not a, another school in the country whose student body, you know, makes up a, a greater ratio of the population that's a division one athlete. So that's just kind of a, a pretty neat thing to pound away at the theme of academic and athletic excellence. You know, and just as a side note for those uh, digressing quickly, you may remember names such as Bob Cousy and Tommy Heisman and Heisman. And you have, uh, you know, Paul Cimarano, who played on that 1952 team. There are a lot of really well-known uh, Ronnie Perry, a lot of professional athletes that have gone through Holy Cross. Yeah, Gordy Lockbaum, back-to-back Heisman oh, yeah. Trophy finalist in the 80s. I mean, Gordy, yeah. I was around. That's when Holy Cross football, and now it's back, obviously. It's back, yeah. But Holy Cross football, you know, back in the day was, you know, I remember BC flying helicopters in with Flutie and the whole nine yards. Yeah. So there's a lot of history, rich athletic history at Holy Cross. What do you think makes, in today's world, Holy Cross special for a student athlete and their family? What, what, what separates Holy Cross when you're considering, you know, other schools, not only within the Northeast, but maybe along the Eastern corridor? Yeah. Great question. Um, there are a, a number of things and, and now more than ever, you know, we are working extremely hard to, to find, to, to explain that, to present this place um, in a way that, it's just that we present it. You know, we don't we don't sell Holy Cross. We present it because we want to find the right fit. And I even find myself at times trying to convince guys to not want to come here so that we do find the right fit. 
Um, and what I think, uh, you know, sets us apart is, is a couple things. As I alluded to earlier, there are very few schools in the country. Okay, you take a list of the top 30 or 40 schools in America academically, and you say, okay, fantastic list of academic schools. Which ones of these offer the comprehensive Division One experience? They're not limited by their school, by their division, by their conference. And you cross a bunch of those schools off. You're left with a list of schools you can count on one, maybe two hands that are elite academics and offer that comprehensive Division One baseball experience. So that's that's one thing. And then one thing you know that is unique to us, obviously, is we're the Jesuit education. You know, we're very much a part of the the Jesuit education with a small class sizes, a commitment to uh, mind, body, and spirit. Um, you know, that's a big part of it as well. Is, is student athletes oftentimes who you know, have the, that type of an education in high school are looking for that in, in college as well. So um, the, the small class sizes, the academic caliber, the type of education, the, the depth of the majors and the comprehensive division one experience, you know, in a region of the country that, in my opinion, is second to none, um, you know, it, it kind of really sets us in this, this little uh, bubble of, wow, there's really only a handful of schools in the country that can offer what Holy Cross offers. You know, and, and, and I really want to kind of expand on that a little bit as somebody born and raised in the Northeast, um, you know, the combination of college environment of which Worcester Mass is inundated with colleges. It's a college community uh, and it's, it has rich traditions. It's a beautiful, beautiful, spectacular campus. And for those student athletes that may be from the Midwest or those student athletes that prefer prefer the rural, small, intimate kind of campus setting, it would be hard to find more camp, another campus that has this, the, the majestic kind of feel uh, to it at, at that Holy Cross offers. So, you know, you're not going to get lost in a big city, but at the same time, it's close enough that if you want to be able to go to a Red Sox game or a Celtics game, et cetera, et cetera, you have that ability. And plus you have major concerts that are held in the city of Worcester at the, at the DCU, it used to be the Worcester Centrum. So it's kind of offers a little bit of both. And so on that note, when you have parents that are coming into uh, Worcester Mass for the first time, do you find that they are overwhelmed by the, the, you know, the beauty of the campus, specifically in the fall? in the spring. I mean, it is spectacular there. Are, are, are lots of parents caught off guard with how beautiful the actual campus is? Yes, blown away. Absolutely blown away. And, you know, the, the phrase that I hear time and time again is, wow, the pictures do not do this place justice. And the pictures on, on our website are, are fantastic. But to experience it um, is a different level. You know, we are that small, insulated, you know, very much a campus feel up on the hill overlooking Worcester, which is the second largest city in New England, uh, only behind Boston. And it's a 45 minute trip into the city of Boston. So what's really neat about this place is Holy Cross can kind of be what you want it to be. If you want that to feel like you're, you know, in that rural setting, stay on campus. You've got it. You've got it. If you want that urban feel, you take a four or five minute drive during downtown Worcester, where there are over 36,000 college students roaming the city of Worcester. Um, you know, you want the major metropolitan Boston is a stone throws away, a stone throw away. So, um, you know, it's very much an insulated campus in that 90% of our students stay on campus for all four years. Um, everybody who lives off campus is right across the street. So everyone who lives off campus can walk to campus. So the, the community feeling the familial vibe of this place is unlike any place I've ever been or ever heard of. And that's one thing that people walk away from our campus with is that feeling of community of family and um you know it, it's just such a beautiful and special place and again it can kind of be what you want it to be in terms of the urban suburban rural situation so our, my last question ed because a lot of student athletes and rightfully so it's their dream you know when i'm asked about the potential of professional baseball everybody seems to equate a power five school with the ability to play uh, professionally and 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 based on the last three major league drafts it is abundantly clear that playing college baseball of which 78 percent of all draft picks are from college at the division one level Worcester and holy cross have a special place for scouts because one they conduct a lot of 
tryouts there, all major league teams. But can you talk to your ability or the history, the rich history, in fact, of the major league draft, Holy Cross athletes getting scouted and, and getting the opportunity to play professionally? Yeah, definitely. So I always say it to when guys sit sit in this office with me, you know, a prerequisite to playing this program is the desire to play professional baseball. But also a prerequisite is having the wherewithal to understand from a macro point of view that it's not the be all end all. And, and hopefully you understand as a, as a young kid that, you know, should you have the opportunity to play professional baseball? Hopefully it's after a, a, it ends after a 20 year Hall of Fame career. Statistically speaking, that's not going to be the case. You may kick it around the minors. You may have a cup of coffee in the, in the bigs, but um, you have that Holy Cross degree and alumni network that's going to be worth its weight in gold for the rest of your life. With our guys, you know, we have had guys have opportunities to play professionally. Uh, 2019 graduate Declan Cronin's in AAA right now, you know, and he's, you know, hope, hopeful that he'll get a call up sooner than later. Uh, when we won it in 2017, you know, we had six players. I was, that was my first year as an assistant coach here. We had six players on that team with opportunities to play professional baseball, both affiliated uh, and independent ball. So um, that's something that is very, very prevalent. We have a scout day every year. Um in the fall and the scouts always tell me how convenient it is for them coming to our stadium here because it's right, you know, right off of whether it's 495 or 84 coming up from Connecticut and New York. Um, you know, and they always say it's so convenient. So for that reason, it's always very well attended between, between 20 and 30 scouts, 20, 28 scouts come to that. And then our, our games are, are very well scouted as well. So, um, you know, that's something that is, we do have a rich history. It has gotten more difficult with the rounds being condensed has gotten more difficult with the rounds being condensed but um the free agent signings i imagine you know will will start to increase we're a very young team so we haven't had it the last couple of years and you know since covid um you know we have we've been very very young so we're looking forward to having some juniors and seniors in the next couple of years that will will have an opportunity to play at the next level for sure and uh that's something that we we talk about and cultivate um but i tell guys focus on being the best player and best teammate and helping Holy Cross be the best you can be and understand that your personal accolades and opportunities, that'll be a byproduct of our team's success. So focus on being a great teammate, being selfless, and really positive things will happen to you. Uh, and again, I just can't speak highly enough about our guy playing in AAA right now, Declan Cronin, who embodies everything that it is that it means to be a Holy Cross baseball player. He's just such a wonderful advocate. He gets it. So talk about a guy that gets it, yet he's you know, a cup of coffee away from playing at the highest level. Um, so those are the types of student athletes that we want, extremely well-rounded, holistic, people who understand they can play professional baseball here. Hopefully it works out great. If it doesn't or if it's for a short period, man, that Holy Cross degree, you're going to be really happy you have that in the back pocket for the rest of your life. Well, as as you can tell, if you're watching or listening to uh, Coach and I, I have a strong affinity for Holy Cross, always have, always will. Uh, my son's since they were little boys, we attended basketball games, football games, baseball games, uh, and we were always treated with tremendous respect and we always enjoyed our experiences. And if you're a family or student athlete and you feel that you have uh, interest in Holy Cross uh, baseball or Holy Cross as a, as a school academically, I'm going to have all of the contact information for, for not only Ed and, and the baseball staff, but also I'm going to have a link up for the Holy Cross university so you can go ahead and poke around and do a you know an online tour and so forth and make sure that if you have a question for coach kohovic just send him an email or maybe follow him give him a follow on twitter uh and and make sure you get your questions answered um uh, on everything to do with holy cross ed i want to say thank you very much i know you're extremely busy and i know you have a four-month-old daughter and so this is a busy time of year with August 1st lurking uh, in, the, in the background here. So thank you so much for taking a few minutes to join us. Walter, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I could not be more thrilled to spend this time with you and you know spread the word of Holy Cross because it's a really, really incredible place. And uh, the more we can get the word out on this place, the better off I think everyone will be. And uh, I really appreciate you and everything you do for college baseball coaches and student athletes. Hey, thank you so much. And again, every Thursday, this is where Coach's Corner, Coach Serrano, is ramping up at his new uh, school, NAIA school, Johnson University. So he's busy uh, getting his student athletes prepared. But every Thursday, Coach Serrano and myself will be sharing with families and student athletes some inner workings of the college experience, not only baseball, but admissions, financial aid, 
uh, academic liaisons, athletic liaisons, things of that nature. So be sure and join us. Give us a follow. Spread the word. Have a great week in baseball, and we'll see you next week.